Hello everybody, Aris Saleh is here with another video of anatomy sculpting and today's topic is male head. Let's start it. As you see, I start the move brush to basically create the big shapes and the proportions. So, if you look at here, uh, it's, it's uh, roughly, imagine there is a oval shape here and from that I try to extrude the jaw part to the middle of this oval part and from the top view if you look at the head the biggest mistake that the basically entry level artists do when they are, uh, start to sculpt the head it's they do imagine the head from the top view is just a sphere and uh, basically circle but that's not right because from the top view you need to have some kind of it's a little bit wide let's me yeah it's a little bit oval shape it's an oval shape which this part which is one third if you imagine one third from the back of the head this is the front basically front this is back from the top view this is from the this part one third from the back is the widest part of the skull and the head and as we go forward it narrows down so it's it's an oval shape egg shape remember that instead of just a circle and let's tell you the other thing that we need to remember that when I started, this is from the front view that I'm drawing. Uh, first of all, I start with a, a sphere and circle from the front view. And if you divide it by half, the eye and the eyebrows are placed. And this is, if imagine this is the eye sockets from the front view, placed underneath of the half of this, uh, it's, it's basically circle. And after that, from here we will have the nose comes out and the nose ends here remember that underneath of this circle and from here the jaw comes out extrude it and like this we need to go forward and the jaw remember uh, this line is almost angular toward the center but for the for the female is more angular but for the males is more straight and this is the other thing that you need to consider about this line of the jaw from the front view and that's it for right now I use clicker brush to make the big plane uh, changes define them and the next part is the nose that I start with that and digging inside to make the zygomatic bone on the sides and the jawline and one of the difference between the male and the female is that the part for the jawline for females it's usually it's nicer and more angular it's like this but for male is more sh uh, more straighter and sharper and sometimes even we see that a bony protrusion pops up here not only is sharp but also there is something pops up here is part of the corner of the uh, jaw and here the masseter muscle comes and attached to these parts and this is the zyge this is the uh, basically zygomatic arch here it goes forwards there you go and extruding the neck and a little bit of the chest
Right now, I'm using Dynamesh and my resolution is pretty low to make the big changes, big play changes and that basically the silhouette right. So the trapezoid muscle that I'm sculpting that from the back, it starts from the back of the neck, uh, back of the skull and it goes down all the way towards the back. Clay adding for the mouse. Okay, right now the muscle that I'm sculpting here it is called external. I'm writing down in intentionally separately Clado Mastoid. Okay, external, uh, it's, it's because of the origin of this muscle that is from the manubrium or top of the sternum. And Clado, it's related to that clavicle because uh, part of that starts from the clavicle, part of that starts from the sternum and it attached to mastoid process. Mastoid process is the bony part that's behind the ear. So this muscle called sternocloido mastoid. And it comes here, one head of that is here, it turns to tendon and attached underneath of the manubrium. Manubrium, manubrium is top part of the sternum. 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 And Manubrium is it's, uh, it's basically an octagonal shape. If I am drawing that right, there you go. It's like this. This part is for clavicle, connect to that, and the first uh, basically uh, ribs and so on. And on the bottom of that, the remaining of the sternum. Here, it places here. And this muscle goes underneath of these parts, not on top of that. It goes underneath of that one head of that. The other head is come here and attaches to the clavicle to one third. One third here. And there is a gap between these two heads. And there is a triangular gap between these two heads. Let me show you with another color. There you go. Yep. And for the male, usually this muscle is more visible and more prominent in comparison to the female. Remember that. And right now I'm sculpting the clavicle. And basically polishing the Thermocloidal mastoid muscle. Okay, right now I increase the resolution of the dynamic, and as you see, I am using this transpose uh, basically tool to measure to see if the eyes are in the middle, if the true of uh, one. Uh, third for the face is uh, right for my head. Basically, rule of sorry, rule of one third. It should be here. Okay. Yep. See, I was measuring that to make sure that really okay here from the eyebrows to the place that head grows is one unit. The other unit is from the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose and the third, the last one is here. The other things that we need to th think about it when we are in the side view right now, let me talk about it, is this part. The bottom of the nose 
is it usually line up nicely with the bottom of that skull and this is the oval shape that I talk to you guys and we extract the jaw from that the bottom of the nose is lined up with this one and side view is really important if you can make your side view right most of the things will be right too because usually people just look at their model and sculpt it from the front view right and don't care too much about the side view and after that at the end when they look at it from the three quarter bottom top it seems as there are a lot of things that are not right it's because they didn't nail it their uh, side view the other thing that is uh, lining up with the bottom of the nose and bottom of the uh, skull is bottom of this zygomatic bone bottom of that is exactly line up with this line and the top part of the zygomatic bone is line up with the bottom of the eye socket if this is our eye socket it goes here is uh, line up with the bottom of that and here is the mastoid process and here is the ear hole and the zygomatic and bone it goes on the top of the ear hole some people draw the zygomatic bone wrongly uh, or sculpt it like this it doesn't go on top of the ear it goes straight on top of the ear hole this is another tip you need to think about it and the next thing I want to talk about it zygomatic bone has a little bit uh, extra piece here around besides exactly besides the eye sockets and it's like this this part goes for the eye sockets and here this part usually it's a little bit add a extra bone here like this and it goes here and this is the temporal line and the temporal muscle comes and attach and goes underneath of the zygomatic bone and attaches to the jaw bone so because of that when you're chewing something you feel that this ma uh, basically temporalis muscle is moving with that because this is connected to your jaw and the next thing I want to talk about it the cladomastoid muscle that I talk about it from the uh, side view when you look at it it should be a nice straight and nice uh, angular line it shouldn't be a curvy shape like this wobbly something or maybe has a belly or goes inside it should be completely uh, uh, straight but a little bit angular yep this line okay and this is for side view okay. okay the parts that is sculpted right now this part which is called globella and this is the nasal bone and these are these two arches superciliary arch ciliary in the anatomy term means eyebrow superciliary means on top of that eyebrow the arch superciliary arch and this which shape is globella and this is the nasal bone so uh, the parts that we sculpted here is these three parts remember that and the remaining of the nose is usually here so a little bit tapered down is cartilage this is lateral cartilage and lateral cartilage I wasn't sure about the name of these uh, because of that I didn't write it down for you guys so I didn't want you to guys to uh, learn something wrong you can search it by your, your own glabella uh, and nasal bone nasal bone is like this nasal bone 
glabella and superciliary arch and this is a lateral cartridge and it narrows down a little bit and on the top here we have two other like this Two cartilage goes. They call it a lar cartilage. A lar cartilage. Cartilage. A lar means wing, related to wing, because this is besides the wing of the nose. They call it a lar cartilage, and it goes here and like this connects. These are the wing of the nose. Wing of the nose are made of fat and uh, then the texture of them are different from these cartilages cartilages are uh, have uh, usually sharp edges then almost the same as bone but for that uh, uh, basically fat pad parts it's very soft and round There is a bony protrusion here that's uh, basically a connection of the temporal bone to the uh, zygomatic arch. It pops up on the corner of the eye on top. And I'm defining the zygomatic arch more, defining that bony protrusion there. The wing of the nose is starting to sculpt it. The cartilage, alar cartilage. And the lateral cartilage and usually when I want to usually the uh, nose of the shape of the nose from the bottom view is like this something like this oh, if I write a little bit wider yeah goes here and this part sorry it's a little bit messy <laughs> let me try it with another color This is the shape of the nose, this is this part is cartilage and it goes all the way to here and these parts are the uh, fat pads and the wings that they curl into inside of the nose itself and it like this it goes here curl into the nose itself and people Usually, it's uh, specifically the people who are at basics miss that part, and we need to have a little bit bump here. It's not that prominent, but it's a little bit, but it, sh it should be there because this uh, wing curls in inside of the nose. The fat pads that I'm sculpting right now, uh, it's nasal, and they are related to, besides the nasal labia uh, fat pads, nasal labia folds, they're on top of nasal labia fold, and maybe they can call it nasal labia fat pads, and it's a triangular fat pad. If you look at here, this starts from almost the root of the nose, 
a little lower than the top of the top lane this is the top lane here a little bit lower and it's rectangular like this and usually it goes up to the place if we imagine this is the eye socket it's line up with this part of the medial and the lower medial side of the uh, eye sockets these fat pads and this is the glabella here the glabella curls into uh, the eye sockets here these two line doesn't meet with each other but this one is a spiral shape it's like this it's like this eye socket so this is part of glabella and this is the lower medial side of the gland orbital side and this fat pad is lined up with that one and there is a separation this is a cheekbone or zygomatic bone it just goes backwards here and there is a distinction here is very obvious in the male but in the females usually it's the fat pads this there is another fat pad here these two fat pads are attached to each other one triangular shape and two but for uh, in males usually there is a separation between them and it goes down and connect to these parts which is uh, it's basically corner of the mouse which all of the muscles come attached to this part and it makes a little bit of a bulge and there is also a fat pad here uh, it's, this is the combination of that uh, bulge uh, uh, as a result of the attachment of all of the muscles together and a little bit fat pad it makes this kind of wedge shape here on the corner of the mouse Constantly looking from different angles to make sure everything is right and pushing back that lower lip. And here about sculpting the lip. Usually there is an indentation here and there is nothing here on exactly on the bottom of that, the chin starts here. And if you want to divide this distance to 3, usually at upper one third. These are estimates, uh, measurements, it, they are then different from person to person. but. If you want to have something to remember it and easily apply to your character, from one third from the bottom of the nose, we reach to that basically um, that opening of the mouth. And if we go again, uh, one uh, more third, one third more toward the bottom, we reach it to the top of the chin, and the rest will be the bottom of the chin itself. When you are sculpting the lips, remember there is a little bit bump here. It's specifically more obvious in the male in comparison to female, which are on the side of your uh, basically chin. And this is the other part that we talked about it previously. And the lower lip um, has very distinct definition here. I will add, sculpt it later. It has two parts. Basically, one part is this part, and the other part is this part. And the edges of the second part here is soften out on that side, and in the middle is sh a little bit sharper here. Right now I'm still in dynamic mode and I don't add more resolution, I'm trying to 
make that basically that's uh, shaped right so I don't add details right now just just trying to define the border of muscles uh, bones to make sure everything proportion make sure everything is right so gradually I will add a little bit more detail when I'm confident with my shapes and proportions okay adding eyeballs sculpting side of that and hiding the eyeball and sculpting the eyelids okay for eyes usually it's in the male there is a sharp transition here if this is the iris, it start before that and it goes here and from here there is a slope here and it goes this fold goes a little bit on a little bit on top of the part of the uh, zygomatic bone that I talked to you guys before here a little bit here this part and every time remember that the upper eyelid and upper lip overlaps on the lower eyelid and the lower lip because of that we have these and on the bottom of this this one and for the bottom eyelid usually we have a nice curve here and the remaining will be straight and here both of them reach to a tendon these two tendons that's uh, they call it cantal tendon medial cantal and ladder but for a lateral parts and outside we don't see them because they go underneath and they're not visible but for the medial side they are very visible here and in this part we have two pieces to uh, fill out these parts the, the, this gap between here the end of this uh, basically eye opening and the eyeball the two things that are let me draw it bigger here one piece that we have here is, is around is almost round here and the other part is flatter they call it lacrimal crunkle yes lacrimal crankle and this one please semi lunaris lunaris yes okay still so, uh, please semi lunaris is almost the same the same as the a third eyelid that uh, animals specifically alligator has if you see that alligator uh, it has um, basically three uh, uh, eyelids and this one is uh, going back and forth uh, it's basically horizontally and the two others are going up and down vertically the same thing we have uh, it's the same uh, uh, third eye and eyelid but a smaller version of that if you see when you're rotating your eyes it moves with that but this part lacrimal and crankle is almost uh, basically constant and doesn't move and uh, lacrimal is the name of the, the part and area in that uh, basically eye socket as I told you guys this uh, if imagine this is glabella and the glabella it goes inside of the occult back in, into the uh, basically eye socket and this is the edge of eye socket if you imagine that there is its groove here and this part is related to the uh, lacrima and basically the tears start from here okay this is for this part Usually there is a bump 
it's from the side view on the nose where the bone uh, ends and the cartilage just starts. For the eyeballs and mouth it's very important to look at them from that uh, uh, lower angle and bottom view and top view to make sure that this is round and is wrapping around the teeth and eyeball. So right now I'm trying to, to mimic the shapes that I talked to you about the, uh, the male eye and lids and roughly I made that and I, later I will go and, and polish that and refine it. So right now it's time for the ears. As you saw just I uh, mask a rectangle and extrude it out and start it to build on top of that. I felt that the chin was a little bit and the mouth area was a little bit too short and maybe a little longer in comparison to... Okay, the next thing that we need to talk about here is the frontal bone. The frontal bone is here and it has two bumps on each side and there is indentation here. Usually there is a... yep, indentation here and this is this our superciliary arch as we talked and this is the glabella and there you go and this is a little bit indentation here between the frontal front frontal area and the other parts of the forehead and one of the main differences uh, between the uh, male and female from the side view regarding their uh, um, frontal part and forehead for females usually it's the forehead is like this is pushing a little bit forward and is at least if it's not put in pushing forward is straight but from male is leaning backwards is like this this is a huge difference between male and female remember that These two uh, bony bumps that exist there and zebra crashed. Uh, I restarted the game. And I'm smoothing out the transition between different parts. Okay, right now it's, I felt that's enough uh, with the proportion and the shapes and I can sub, uh, make a very subdivided version of my uh, mesh uh, model to and add a little bit more detail on top of that. So I use the zero measure guidelines which is a brush, you can find it in the brush and also the poly paint a feature of the zero measure to add more density on that painted area. I use different algorithms and settings of the uh, zero measure to see which one works better for me. Because all in all, the zero measure is not that good for organic models. If you want to have something nice and for production, you need to take it to 3D packages like Maya or 3 d Studio Max or Blender to do that. But for this demo, I used it, it was uh, uh, basically sufficient to use that one and after that uh, I basically projected that everything that I had from that dynamic model to a subdivided model so right now I'm adding the eyelids eyelids are uh, prominent and they are very thick you shouldn't ignore the thickness of them There are mm, two uh, group of uh, fat pads underneath of that eyes 
uh, one of them is here this is the, th the tendon that I talked before with you guys uh, candle tendons these two and one of the uh, fat pads it goes here from the bottom of the eyelid uh, to the um, medial at cantal tendon and here is both muscle and uh, this part this area both muscle and fat pads but usually it's in that older people in this fat pad pops a little bit more and the other fat pads it's here on the this is the eye sockets here and it comes here goes towards the corner and again this is more prominent in the older people and this is separated in old people from the zygomatic bone but the person if it's and uh, the person is younger there is another fat pad here which covers these two area let me write with another color here on top of that it covers the border of the eye socket and specifically for female these fat pads play a very um, significant role to make and soften out everything and there isn't you know, uh, basically sharp transition between these parts because as you know if in the female uh, portraits there is it um, sharp transition they make them old and so specifically in the females this part is very uh, prominent and it has more volume in comparison to the male and there is an another fat pad here on the top and again this is not that prominent in the males but for females is more prominent and for female is a little bit goes higher to cover the gap and the border the upper border of that uh, basically uh, eye socket so in the females we have one in the bottom and on the one in the top to um, make a smooth transition for the upper and lower uh, part of the eye socket border of the eye socket when we have both uh, fat pads in the male but they are very uh, it's basically thin and um, sometimes they, it's, they drop down and they shrink as they uh, grow up the, and people get older so the part on this upper eyelid that I'm sculpting right now is the both combination of that fat pad and the skin that I talked and also the basically uh, the orbiculus uh, uh, oculi the muscle of the eye, the round muscle of the eye the fat pad that I talked to you on the bottom and your lacrimal like cranial and places uh, lunaris on the medial side of the eye as I'm sculpting them the shape and refining the shape of the eye as I talked to you before Here. See, there is a nice sharp here shape. If this is the iris, and after that, here is a little bit straighter, and there is a nice slope here, three parts. And here, it's a straight and a nice curve here. See, there look. But for female, the upper eyelid is more rounder, it is not as sharp as the male one. Again, looking at model from different angles, from bottom view is very important for eyes. And measuring again, eyes are in the middle of that and face from the front view. When you look at it, you need to uh, measure it, they should be exactly in the middle. Mine wasn't, so I tried to fix that. And 
even though my character is a male, still I am trying to make it acceptable and nice transition between the bony parts and the skin and other parts. But not that much and smoother, as smooth as the female one, but they shouldn't be that much uh, sharp too. I'm working on that transition as I talk to you. This is a little bit skin fault here it's because of that uh, basically muscles underneath and the glabella. A little bit more this area. And the other thing that we need to talk about it is the eyebrows. Eyebrows for that males are more straight here in the middle part if it says one two three the middle part is more straight but for females usually the eyebrows goes this way and it comes down it's, it's a nice uh, it's basically shape that is a uh, goes upward and after that comes down but for males usually it's a straight the middle part this is the middle part for female goes upward smoothing out the transition okay, between the uh, fat pad, the skin and that superior border of or superior or upper border of that uh, eye socket. That the muscle and the fat pad that I talked to you exactly underneath of the eyelid and a little bit emphasizing on that. Separated from the uh, eyelid itself. Yep. Right now, I'm adding a little bit more division between the eyelid and that fat pad muscles. And as you see, the upper eyelid is overlapping on the bottom eyelid. That's very important. Looking the mother from the bottom view for the nose. And see right now, I think that I told you that uh, wings curls into the inside of the nose itself. I sculpted that part. It's not that much, but it should be there and you need to feel it. Okay, uh, for males, usually the upper lip, this part, the middle part, is almost lined up with the other parts of that upper uh, lip. But for females, is usually is this part is more prominent, and the lips are like this, the upper lips. This part goes again. The same thing happens to that. And this part, and the lower. But for males, it's usually this part is not that prominent. It's smoother, and here this goes. And the thickness of that is less than female. Both the upper lip and the lower lip. That Basically, the height, the height of that, is less than this, and 
more straighter in comparison to be curvier. And in female, most of the features are more curvier. The eyebrow that we talked, the lips, a lot of parts that basically the eyelid itself, but for males is more angular and straight. sculpting the division on the lower uh, lip as I talk to you guys two parts of that fixing a little bit shape of the upper eyelid and the corner of the mouse the notch part that is the placement of attachment of the, all of the muscles around the mouse lips to make the shapes right oh, right now I add a little bit touch on that division of two parts of the lower lip okay stops in ears usually people um, have some ears ready and when they are sculpting the characters, just they import that as insert image or whatever they prefer and add it to the characters. But sculpting ears honestly is not that hard if you know just that basic parts and the important parts of that. Here, when you are sculpting the ears. This part goes inside. If I'm right, it's helix. And this part is just two heads, triangular, and there is a gap between that. It goes this way, anti helix. Anti helix. Yeah, one element. One, two, this is number two, and number three is Tregis. I forgot how to spell it, Tregis, if I'm right, Tregis, I'm not sure, and Anti Tregis, this part, Anti Tregis, three, four, Anti Tregis, three, four. If you remember these four parts and also the last part, the lobe here, four here, lobe five. Yeah, if you remember these five parts of the ear, you can easily sculpt ear. And but there are uh, um, other small things that you need to remember. This the let me try it with another angle. Is angular here? Is not a straight. Remember that straight. Sorry, straight. Is not a straight. Is angular a little bit. Leaning backward. Remember that one. And from the ba back view, if you look at your model, too, if you, this is the head and the jaw goes there, and this one is a little bit angular here too and it connects here the ear from the back view too is a little bit angular too from both sides and front or back this is angular And on top of that is line up with the eyebrows line and bottom part of that is line up with the nose, bottom of the nose. A lot of things are line up with the bottom of the nose, bottom of the zygomatic arch, bottom of the skull as we talked about it before, and bottom of the ear. Try 
trying to smooth it out the transitions, this temporal line, temporal line that I'm sculpting that right now. I'm trying to make it a little more visible and but on the other side I want to make a nice transition between the temporal line and the rest of that head. Right now, I wanted to add the iris and the bump on the cornea. But for the first uh, try, it was a little bit too big, so I tried to redo it. And I used a mask circle. So finally, this one is good. I go to the lower subdivision level and move it out and smooth out the transition that and the remaining of the cornea and the eyeball basically okay one of the important things that I want to talk about this fat pad as we talked this, this is that uh, lower orbit uh, margin of the uh, it's basically all oh, here. This part is line. This fat pad is lined up with the lower uh, or inferior margin of the uh, eye socket from here. From here, this border is lined up uh, with the bottom of the nose or base of the nose. And here, remember that it goes on top of the wing of the nose. A lot of people, specifically that beginners, sculpt it and bring it here to the wing of the nose, but it's not correct. We have a nice rectangular shape gap here in between these two. Remember that. And this, this part, lower part of that is lined up with the zygomatic major muscle. The zygomatic major starts, and this is zygomatic bone. In that it goes towards there, toward the and this is the ear hole as we talked, it goes on top of the ear hole, not top of the ear itself. Some people do it on top of the ear, the zygomatic bone. And the muscle zygomatic major it comes it starts from here, the corner at, or almost the corner, the part that's uh, the direction of the this bone change, and it goes all the way to the corner of the mouse. And this fat pad, the lower border of that is lined up with this muscle. Remember that. Upper part, basically the medial part, is lined up with the uh, base of the nose. This part is lined up with the uh, bottom uh, or lower or inferior margin of the eye sockets. Here goes on top of the wing of the nose, and here is lined up with the zygomatic major muscle. So I use inflate brush to basically make it a little bit bulgier the border and after that I use the dummy sander to make it uh, basically it's sharp line there to define the border nicely and emphasizing more on the sternocloidal uh, it's basically mastoid muscle starts from the mastoid process behind the ear and it goes all the way down to that one third of the beginning of the clavicle and underneath of the manubrium, the parts of the sternum. And as I mentioned from the side view, it should be a straight line, a straight angular line, not curvy. As you see, I turned it head of that that goes underneath of the uh, manubrium and between the head of the clavicles, that um, basically thinner because it turns to tender there. I am sculpting a little bit part of the uh, pectoralis major, upper part of that, and also the uh, front or anterior part of the deltoid muscle and trapezoid muscle in the back 
I feel that the shoulders are narrow, I made them wider. And trapezoid muscle, when you look at from the top view, it's exactly lined up with that anterior part of the deltoid. It comes here, bam, and it's lined up. Both of them attach with the same part of the basically the clavicle. That's the uh, last one third. I'm emphasizing more on the two columns of the muscle that goes up and attached to the bottom of the skull and related to the trapezius muscle. On the male, these two muscles are more prominent in comparison to female and I smoothed out the transition between the sternocleidal mastoid and the trapezius muscle here. And the apollodems here, the V shape from the front view. of my model, basically the if you can call it pedestal parts a little bit sharper. Pedestal for the head. And this is the final result. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something out of that and have a great day.